Philip the Deacon and Evangelist in the New Testament. Let's look at the character, life, and person of Philip the Deacon. This is a map of Philip's travels in his life, where the scripture said he went. Philip was first mentioned about A.D. 35 through 36, and in three sections of the book of Acts. There is very little known about Philip, but let's find out what we do know. Acts 6 verse 1. Now in those days, when the number of disciples was multiplied, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. We notice that the number of disciples was multiplied, and there is a complaint against the Hebrews. Pretty interesting. The Hellenists were Jews born out of Palestine. They were so-called because they spoke the Greek language. The Hebrews were the pure Jews who, not residing necessarily in Palestine, still used the Hebrew scriptures and, sp and spoke the dialect of the sacred tongue, then current Aramaic. The distinction between the Greeks and the Hebrews was not one of nationality, but of language. Acts 6 verse 2. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. The apostle requested seven men to be selected from the congregation to serve the needs of the widows and the poor. They were never called deacons at this point, but the Greek word rendered to serve is the verb form in which the word deacon is the noun. The usual view is that they were deacons. The start of deacons, men who serve. Serve means to be attended, use the office of a deacon. Acts 6 verse 3. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So they had to be men of good character, with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Seven means completeness, perfection, and wholeness, used over 700 times in the Bible. Of good reputation, a reputation was a guarantee that they would handle the truth and trust faithfully. Full of the Holy Spirit, those who lies indicated the fruit of the Spirit. A wisdom, prudent, discretion, and judgment would be essential, whom we may appoint the apostle ordained Philip into office. Verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. This was the apostle's primary purpose. Observe that the apostles regarded prayer of equal importance while preaching but prayer was first mentioned. Verse 5. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man of full faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and five more. Names are all Greek. Remember, the Jews have two names, one Hebrew and the other Greek or Roman. They chose Stephen. He was specifically described on account of the glory of martyrdom that was soon followed. Philip distinguished as Philip the Evangelist, the others are not really mentioned again, the second name after Stephen in the group of seven. Proselyte, someone who had been converted to Judaism and been circumcised, a Gentile. Acts 6, verse 6. Whom they set before the apostles, then they had prayed, they laid hands on them. First they prayed, then laid hands on Philip, confirmed to this office. Nelson received his commission and authority from the apostles. Verse 7. Then the word of God spread, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Priests, they actually converted members of the priesthood. Is this why the Jewish leadership went after the church? Makes me wonder sometimes. The next time we find Philip, he is fleeing Jerusalem heading toward Samaria. Acts 8 verse 3. But Saul kept trying to destroy the church. Going into one house after another, he began dragging off men and women and throwing them in prison. Paul, who was called Saul at this time, was trying to destroy the church. And he went after the men and women of the Christian church. A great persecution of the church at Jerusalem and many Christians had to flee to other parts of Judea. Verse 4. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Scattered saints because of persecution in Jerusalem by Paul or Saul. So they had to flee. Verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria 
and preach Christ to them. When it says down, city of Samaria is north of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is on a high hill. Down means going downhill. Verse 6, And the multitude with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. After the stoning of Stephen, Saul persecution drove Philip to Samaria where he left Jerusalem, where he preached the gospels to the Samaritans. The Samaritans were looked down upon by the Jews. They were sometimes viewed as half-Jews or just hated by the Jews. They accepted the message of the gospel, and later Peter and John went to the new converts in Samaria. Philip was quite a speaker and did miracles and healings by the Holy Spirit and received a warm welcome among the Samaritans who came to hear the word. Remember, Jesus went first to the Samaria and talked to the woman at the well, then stayed for two days and preached the kingdom of God to them. Verse 7 For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many were paralyzed, and lame were healed. So Philip was able to throw out the demons that was in the individuals, and he was able to, through the Holy Spirit, to heal those who are paralyzed and lame. Unclean spirit, impure spirits, resisted to come out of many who were possessed. Individuals who were paralyzed and lame were healed by speaking in the name of Jesus. Matthew 7:22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? John 14, verse 12 through 14. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's quite a promise. Verse 8. And there was a great joy in that city, Samaria. That change to the city the change to the city people brought on by the gospel, as well to the healings of the sick and the afflicted, and afflicted individuals which were restored to health. Now let's jump, let's go down to verse 12. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. So here we find out he's actually preached the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And men and women both were baptized. They believed Philip in part preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Faith comes by hearing of the word. Verse 13. And Simon himself also believed when he was baptized. He continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. This is the last time Philip's mentioned in this segment of the scriptures. But we do know that Philip was doing miracles and signs. Now go down to verse 26. Now the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert. If you look at the map, you can see where the from Jerusalem to Gaza along the desert road. A messenger angel spoke to Philip. Just as a matter of fact, I mean, like he did, to go along the desert road to Gaza. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Caius, the queen of Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem to worship. The eunuch had great authority, he was in charge of all her treasures, and came to Jerusalem to worship. So this is quite interesting. Think about what we said. Verse 28. Was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake the chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? An interesting question. That's how he was able to get a hold of the uh, uni. Verse 31. And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him, which Philip did. Verse 32. And this was a passage of scripture he was reading. Like a sheep 
he was led away to be slaughtered, and like a lamb is silent before his shears, so he does not open his mouth. Philip explained that this was about Jesus and that the words were a prophecy about what was to happen to Jesus. Isaiah 53, 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to slaughter, as a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. Acts 8, verse 33. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his descendants? For his life is taken away from the earth. Isaiah 53, 8. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. Verse 34. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does this prophet say this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at this scripture. Preach Jesus to him. We notice he preached unto him Jesus. He preached a person, the Lord Jesus. Interesting. Verse 36. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch had said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Good question. Verse 37. Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Very interesting that what he said. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Verse 38. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Verse 39. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Quite an impressive exit. The man was baptized and went on his way rejoicing. While Philip went north to Caesarea, the major seaport of Israel and its secular capital of the Roman Empire. Acts 8, verse 4. We find Philip now. Philip was found at Azarus, passed through. He preached in all the city till he came to Caesarea. Caesarea was the political capital of Judea on the coast. It was built by Herod in honor of Augustus between Carmel and Joppa, 55 miles northwest of Jerusalem on the Mediterranean. Now we're going to lose sight of Philip for a time. This is the last segment. Now, Paul was heading to Jerusalem about 25 years later. This is around 60 AD. Acts 21 verse 8. On the next day, we who were Paul's companion departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with them. So now we find Philip at this location. You would think it would be an interesting conversation between the Apostle Paul and Philip about being forced to flee Jerusalem. Could this be where Luke learned things about the early church from Philip? Philip is now listed as an evangelist by the Holy Spirit and probably used his house for the place to meet for services. Was he well off? This is a photo of what is left of the Roman harbor at Caesarea. This city became very important in the life of Paul. Paul was, was held there by Festus. Soldiers took Paul there. He stayed with Philip there. He traveled in and out of Caesarea with the travels. And also Cornelius lived there. Verse 9. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. Philip was married. Daughters implication as unmarried. This is what we learn about Phil from the scriptures. Philip was introduced as a deacon in Acts 6 and as an evangelist in Acts 21. At the outbreak of the Roman Jewish wars in 66 AD, Philip and his four daughters escaped to Hierapolis. If you look on the map there, you can see this is near Laodicean and Colossae. The Eubius church history, he wrote, renowned the daughters of Philip for the prophecy gifts and he held the women as an example of the right living and refers to them as examples to others. People would travel a long distance to consult with him. Philip and his four virgin daughters who were prophecies are said to have been buried in Hierapolis. Jesus was able to use Philip mightily to bring the gospel to many, many individuals. He was a blessing to others for many, many years of his life.